All right, y'all. What's going on? Uh, BOKC Glow back with another video. I'm not going to edit too much. Look, I got to do this real quick before I go into work. It's my best time to do it. I'm doing it in daytime. As y'all can see, I only cut the light on because it's this little black thing I got to take down. Blah, blah, blah. All right, look. Listen, we got to talk about the preseason. We also have to talk about Bronny James and a whole bunch of other stuff. And I'm just going to try and match it in this video. Try not to end too much. So here we go. First off, I want to shout out to everybody who followed me on TikTok. We're almost at 3K. Not only that, bro. Real quick, I'm going to try not to sound so monotone. There's a lot of people who tell me I sound monotone. That's just how I sound. But I know I need to sound more excited if I'm going to pull in more views. So that's what All right, so listen, look. Here's the first thing, bro. Bronny James. I don't know how many times I have to say this, okay? Stop expecting Bronny James to just jump out there and average 20 and 10. Stop doing that. Bro, do you know how much he has to do to live up to his father's legacy? Like, all right, think about this. Think about this. That's like saying because Giannis is in the league, his brother should be like that too. We can't expect that out of his brother. His brother has a whole different game. Bronny has a whole different game. Yes, he trains with LeBron. That's his father. Yes, you, you see him uh, in videos with him, training with him in a Lakers facility, in a practice facility. Okay, cool. But listen, you can't expect that man to play exactly like LeBron average what LeBron averages, bro. And it's just the preseason. Everybody in the summer league was clowning him. You even seen when Jalen Brown said something about he don't think Bronny's ready for the lead. Bro, I understand that's LeBron's son, but give him time. He just stepped in. He only did one year in college. Me personally, this is what I'm saying. Me personally, if I'm Bronny James, I probably would have said, hey, Pop, look, listen. I know you want me in the league. You want to play with your son and everything, but listen. Give me either one more year in college or give me some time to develop in the in the G League a little bit. Just at least give me two, three months in the G League. Let me show them what I can actually do. But I would have said, Dad, let me get two, three months in the league of the G League. Then let me come back. Because at that point, I'm developing something. People, people think the G League is just talentless. There are some people, not everybody, but there are some people that feel like the G League is just talentless. It's somewhere where you go to develop, or if you get injured, they make sure you're still playing the same. That's what they did for Zach, to Zach Levine and them for like, think like two games or something like that. But it's, it's just to make sure you're still good or you're developing good. Because you don't want to be a bust in the league. <clears throat> Can Bronny be claimed as a bust? No, because he was a second round pick. But at the same time, bro, you can't expect him to come in here and do all this. He was already pressured to be in this league. And what I mean by that is he was pressured to just jump right into the league, not to be able to develop or anything, not to stay two, three years in college. I believe that if he would have stayed two, three years in college, people would have clowned him for that because LeBron didn't go to college. You know what I'm saying? He went straight to the league. I believe some people would have clowned him for that. But, you know, at the same time, I will say, it, di it didn't look good. It didn't look good. You know what I'm saying? I think he went 0 for 5. I'll probably put the stats up here. I think he went 0 for 5 his first game. Uh, 0 for 3 the next game, something like that. He's looking a bit, you know, not... What's the word I'm trying to say? He doesn't look dazed out there. He doesn't look lost out there. But he looks like he just hasn't caught a rhythm yet. He hasn't caught a rhythm for shooting. He hasn't caught a rhythm for passing uh, at the right time. He hasn't caught a rhythm for uh, full-on basically taking over the court when he's on the court. You know what I'm saying? So, I would have took some time to go to the G League. And then came back like a month or two in. Make sure I develop. Make sure I get my game up there. Because this is LeBron James' son we're talking about. Do you know how clown he's going to be? How clown if don't nobody? I mean, if he doesn't develop into what people think he's supposed to, and if nobody believes in that, Skip Bayless is going to have a field day. To wear number 23 and choose to, to carry on the powder-throwing routine. Any he thought he was ready to outdo 
Michael Jordan. That's what he thought coming in. Trust me on this. Y'all already know how Skip Bayless is. It, and, it's, and it's ridiculous. All I'm saying is, man, give Bronny some time. That's the first subject I'm talking about. Give Bronny some time. Let him develop, bro. Let him come off the bench, even if he averages like five points in like the first two months or something like that. Give him time. Give the kid time. You know what I'm saying? Make him like feel welcome in LA. Don't, cause LA fans, LA fans, Philly fans, Boston fans, they don't give a damn about the uh, uh, players, especially the GMs. They, you injured, they'll trade you. Look at Isaiah Thomas. Uh, Philly fans, you can hear it all over the place. If you are not good, if you do not live up to potential or anything, you will get traded. I think there was a thing where Jordan B put up. He knows that the fans probably want him traded because they can't get out the second round. Lakers fans will boo you if you aren't good. Just give him time. Don't discourage him because they're not going to mess it up. Y'all going to mess up something that could be great or could at least be a great addition to the team. Just give him time. Next subject I want to talk about is some of the teams. What I've seen through the preseason so far. The Sixers played the Breakers, so I really can't say anything about them right now. The Breakers are, come on, everybody blows them out every damn year. Every time they play them in the preseason, they blow them out. Um, I like what I'm seeing from the Timberwolves. Timberwolves don't look too bad. Timberwolves looking like they're, uh, I'm not going to say where they're supposed to be. Like, basically, full potential strength. Because, you know, again, adding the addition of Julius Randle. But, Rob, I think his name is Rob Dillon, Dillingham or something like that. He's making up for a lot of stuff. Him and him and Anthony Edwards could be a good backcourt duo. If they decide to put Mike Conley coming off the bench as a sixth man or something like that. Which I don't think I see them doing. Because Mike Conley is still very productive. He can still give you, like, 17 to 8. 15 to 8, you know, 13 to 9. He, he's still very productive. Um, still very under underrated point guard. But Rob Dillingham, I believe that he is, and I'm sorry if I'm saying name wrong, but I believe he is something that could be good in that backcourt with Anthony Edwards. I'm not going to lie. He put up 21 against Bronny James. He's not doing too bad. He looked like he, the Timberwolves look like they are still that team to try and always beat. They're, they're going to give you a hard time. But I won't say that they're bound to the finals like other teams, uh, such as like the Knicks in Boston. Those are like finals bound teams to where you have no second doubt in your mind that this team is probably going to make it. Um, but like I said, Tim Bulls look good. Uh, i seen the Bulls play. We don't look too bad. We don't look too bad, uh, but what I will say is there's a lot of work we need to do on our perimeter defense. Uh, there's a lot of work we need to do with uh, keeping up with these other teams, the pace of them, because it's not that we're old. It's not that we can't keep up with them. It just looks like we're not 100% um, locked in. Our chemistry is not 100%. Our how we're bringing it, how we're bringing the power to the court is not 100%, but I will say we we do look good. We don't look like no runovers, obviously. Um, now, if I could project how many wins we might get. 55, no, nah, I'm just playing. <laughs> Stop it. Maybe 41. We look like we, we look like we can get like 41 wins. Uh, I hope that's enough to get at least a six seed. Or at least the playing, because you know, the West always, it don't matter if you got like 45 wins, you're probably in the playing. <laughs> you know how tough the West is. Uh, but I, I hope that the East ain't that tough this year to where we can at least hit the sixth seed um, or at the top of the play. And I, I don't know, man. I just want to, I just want to bring back Chicago to what we used to be, man. And shout out to Derrick Rose for his. I wish the Bulls would have got him back uh, before he retired, but he ended up retiring, I think, after 15 seasons. I've been watching Derrick Rose since he first came in the league. Shout out Derrick Rose, man. Going to miss you, bro. We're going to miss you. But, hey, another legend just put in the books. I did also see the Knicks play. Carl Towns don't look – Carl Towns, like I said in the last video, that was going to be a good fit 
for uh, Jalen Brunson. Jalen Brunson now has somebody like a Porzingis, just shorter. But it's it's scary. It's, it, it looks scary. It looks scary. It looks like uh, they're not going to give up easy. It looks like this team has a lot of energy to run on. It looks like they have a lot of uh, a lot of fuel in the tank. It's like they have hella fuel in the tank to be pushing and pushing the pace and keep it going off off the pick and roll, off a of, uh, pick and pop, off of, uh, down screens, low post, high post, three point range, mid range. They look like they got good perimeter defense because you know we still got Josh Hart and Mikael Bridges who can defend. Are they like blow out everybody to where there's no stopping them? Scared? No, they're not that scary. Like like the 2013. Heat scary. Scary enough to be maybe the 2022 Warriors. Not saying they're equivalent to them, but they probably look that scary to where some people still have them as the underdogs because, you know, people out there don't like Carl Towns. People out there call Carl Towns lazy and everything. They, they give the same thing for Andrew Wiggins until Andrew Wiggins showed in 2022 that, you know what I'm saying? It's just some places just don't have the fitted system for you either at that time or anymore so they get rid of you you know what i'm saying so i i give them the 2022 warriors they're they're still kind of underdogs to most people because you still got boston and you still got uh shit even i've seen some people even have because zion's coming back he look bigger i've seen some people have the pelicans you know what i'm saying playing at a very high level i still have i still see people and the, the whole, and let me, let, me, let me say this real quick. Let me say this real one, real one thing real quick. And I mean no disrespect to you, Mr. Wimbayamba. I have no disrespect to you, Chris Paul. Can we stop <laughs> with the Spurs all of a sudden going to be a top seed in the West? Let me, let me get closer for y'all. Minnesota. Dallas, listen to me, not fully, but could be a playing team, Houston Rockets, they don't look that bad, as much as I don't like Dylan Brooks, what they did last season was better than, you know, before, Jalen Green and Fred Van Vliet look like they click real well, Dylan Brooks gives them that little bit of an edge of feistiness or whatever. John Morant's back. So you have the Memphis Grizzlies. Listen to me. John Morant is back. So you have the Memphis Grizzlies. Did they lose to the Lakers in six games in the first round? Yes. Overconfident and everything. But y'all know who messed that up for them. Y'all know. Pelicans. I believe the Pelicans are better than the Spurs, depending on Zion and Brandon Ingram's health, and depending on if CJ McCullum is still going to come back the same, I have the Pelicans above them. We all leaving out the Clippers. Did we forget about Kawhi? Did we forget about James Harden? Yeah, the team don't look as strong because they lost Russell Westbrook and they lost Paul George. But are we really going to sit the Spurs above the Clippers right now? They still have experience. Lakers, I have them above the Spurs. And then Denver. How did we forget about Denver? How, how did Denver get exited off the map? So you have all these teams in the West, and then you have these people see Chris Paul go to the Spurs. Yes, he has a resume of put up Dallas Mavericks. Don't forget about them. That's a scary team. They just made the finals last year. Yeah, Clay Thompson ain't been playing good for the Warriors, but how do we know that this system of Dallas ain't going to bring back maybe 20 points, 15 points per game, Clay, shooting, attempting seven threes, making four out of seven threes each game. We can't forget about that. We can't. But I seen somebody, the Suns, but anyway, I seen somebody bring up Chris Paul's resume. Teams have been bad, and then when he comes in, he raises them always above 45% uh, 
in the wins or 50 percent my bad so basically if a team was let's say 32 and 50 last season he'll bring them up to like 50 and 32 49 and 33 uh 45 and 37 you see what i'm saying okay cool name me three people on that team outside of chris paul outside of victor with mayamba Name me other people on that team who can catch fire quickly and give you 20 off rip every game. Now, no disrespect to Devin Vassell either. Devin Vassell is a bucket. But we're talking 20 points every single night, without a doubt. So if Wimbayamba's off, if Chris Paul is off, you gonna need somebody behind to give you 20 points, 10 rebounds, 20 points, 10 assists. You gonna need somebody behind those two. And if you don't have that person, you are not going to win. My bad, y'all. You are not going to win that many games if you do not have that third option. With this Spurs team, you have to have that third option. Do I think Devin Vassell can be that third option? Yes, but it depends on how they use him along with Victor Wimbanyamba and Chris Paul. That's all I'm saying. So stop putting, I understand Victor is real good and Chris Paul can, you know what I'm saying, help lead a team to the playoffs, but we gotta stop putting these teams, we can't act like these other teams ain't good, we can't. I'm sorry, we can't act like these other teams in the West ain't good at all. I'm sorry, it had to be said. Victor, I've watched your game, you have a very cool game. But I'm, I'm just, I just don't need anybody just putting a team that just went, that only won, I think, like 23 games last year, maybe 22, above all other, the other, other teams. I'll have to look that up. I'll put it on the screen. Okay? That's mainly what I had to say about the Spurs. Okay? But the, the West looks strong. Okay? The East looks strong, but I don't think it's enough teams to... Last video I did, forget about Cleveland and Orlando, though. Orlando's... Oh, hey, Orlando looked good, especially pushing the Cavaliers to seven seven games last season. In the playoffs, yeah. After not being in the playoffs, after not being in the high seed, not touching a fifth seed for how long, and they came in and pushed the Cavs to seven games with Donovan Mitchell. Hey, Orlando and Cleveland's up there, too. We might get the play, and I don't know. But, hey. That's all I got to say for this video, all right? I love y'all, okay? I'm going to keep trying to put, I'm going to keep putting videos out for y'all. I'm going to keep putting videos out like this until I get my Elgato, until I get my charger for my computer to do live stream. If y'all did enjoy this video, please like, please share, subscribe, and please comment what you would like to see. Comment with, comment uh down below what you think about what I said this whole video, and I'm out. Peace, y'all.